Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're reviewing Brass Birmingham, an economic strategy game for two to four players based on the UK's Industrial Revolution in 1770 to 1870. I first heard of this game when it took the number one spot on Board Game Geek from Gloomhaven and was incredibly lucky to source a copy for our current competition as I think I managed to grab the literal last copy in the country, if not the known universe. The review copy that we're using here was given to us by Pavel, our Polish friend from Killarney, and it's thanks to him that the competition copy will retain its minty fresh new game smell as we did not have to open it to review the game. So a big thank you to Pavel for the loan of this game. A brand new minty fresh copy incidentally, which we are giving away to one of our lucky subscribers. And if you check the description box below, you'll find all the info you need, plus the link to enter yourself. Hurry though, as the closing date is May 5th, 2023. Brass Birmingham is, quite frankly, an excellent marketing strategy game with a card drafting mechanic that covers two eras in the British Industrial Revolution, the Canal Era and the Train Era. As competing entrepreneurs, you need to develop networks and industries in order to garner both income and victory points. The game starts off very slowly as any resources needed to develop industry in Birmingham literally needs to be developed by you and any resources provided needs to be linked to the area to which you plan to develop. This restricts you greatly in the first era as you have to take out loans in order to effectively play and you're further restricted again by the card drafting mechanic which dictates what areas you can develop in. In order to develop in Stoke-on-Kent for example you need to have the Stoke-on-Kent card. On a player's turn they play a card and take the resulting actions. Build, network, develop, sell, loan and a new action that differentiates this game from the previous editions of Brass and Brass Lancashire which is Scout which is essentially drafting a wild card in exchange for two standard cards and a turn. Players can build any industry they can as long as they have access to the basic resources such as coal, iron and most importantly beer for the workers. But it will not turn a profit or score you victory points until the resources it produces are sold are utilized by other players and yourself. So a large part of the game is ensuring that what industry you do develop is used. Otherwise, it's a waste of resources. You also have to ensure that the area you wish to build or develop is networked to the materials needed to do so, such as coal and beer, with iron being the one exception. This is done via canals in the first era and trains in the second. You can also use up links set up by other players to gather resources and any resources you create such as coal, iron or beer can be arbitrarily taken away by another player for their own purposes as happened frequently with beer in our games, both on the table and off the table. The other interesting mechanic worth noting is that halfway through the game the links are reset and level 1 industry developments are swept from the board. So it's effectively a fresh game board with new opportunities but better developed. So the second era has a much better and quicker start. Players score victory points by developing and building industries, by creating links and can deviously score victory points by linking their networks to industries that other players are developing or have developed if they have the link icon on the token. It's a very cerebral game with multitudes of opportunities to score, but the first game or two that you play will likely give you a headache as you spend a massive amount of time thinking about your next move or trying to plan four or five moves ahead. It's not overly complex in its mechanics, but because building both links and industry is an arduous matter in terms of combining resources such as beer and coal with location and linking, same, it's a game that requires a massive amount of thought. This does give rise to analysis paralysis with players, but you spend so long planning your own move, you never really notice it in others. The board itself is double-sided, and the components are gorgeous. I would, however, advise you to invest in a custom storage insert in order to protect your components, as there's quite a lot of them, and the loss of one of them would impact the game. There are several level one or two tokens for players to develop, and one missing would give an annoying player 
an unfair advantage. Thematically, I quite enjoyed the game. The sense of sparseness in the first era is quite apparent, and the sense of satisfaction in the second era is quite rewarding, as you do literally feel like the industrialists from the 18th and 19th centuries who developed this land from nothing. The board also has great replay value, as the markets that you sell goods to, such as manufacturing, are randomly assigned to the board with tokens that are turned face up at the start of the game. This, combined with the random location drawing from the card drawing mechanic, prevents players from developing a repetitive, effective strategy for every game, and instead forces them to think on their feet, as it were, and score points as the board develops. I found this to be an excellent game, but quite heavy every time I played it. A very rewarding but tiring experience. If you set this game up for your game night, it'll be the only one that you play. But nonetheless, I can see how this genius little game is the one that finally dethroned the mighty Gloomhaven. So until next time, this is Sean from The Lucky Roll. As always, if you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, good luck, God bless, and uh, a one-way ticket to Birmingham, please.